All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Village of Royal Palm Beach Special Magistrate hearing for Wednesday, January 8th, 2020. My name is Doug McGibbon. I'm the Special Magistrate. As I like to say, if you have a code enforcement issue, you are in the right place. First thing we're going to do is swear everyone in. We're probably going to do this a couple of times as strays come through. We'll try to remember who we've already sworn in, but everyone raise your right hand. Say I do when we're done. Does everyone swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Everyone but the court reporter, yes. Because okay. she just takes it all down. All right, uh, most of our hearings tonight are going to be violation hearings or fine assessment hearings. When you hear your name called, oh, first thing, did everyone sign up on the agenda so they know to pull your case? Okay, if you didn't, you're going to be sitting at the, uh, in the room at, as, at the end of the people and they'll figure it out. Um, as I say, when they, you hear your name, you're going to go up to that other uh, microphone over there. You're going to identify yourself. The village attorney will give you some documents to look at to uh, object to or not. The uh, village will present its case. You get to present your response, and I get to make a decision. Um, that reverses when we get to the fine mitigation hearings. Those people have already been through a violation and a fine assessment hearing. They are asking for relief, so they'll get to go first, and the village will respond. I think that's my normal speech, so happy new year. Thank you. Take it away. Uh, Amity Barnard, Assistant Village Attorney. We're starting on page one of the agenda, fine assessment hearings, case 19-1364-115 Malaga Street, Jacqueline A. Donaldson and Carol A. Price. Gail McClain, <coughs> Code Enforcement for the Village Rural Palm Beach. I'd like to enter into evidence the previous order finding violation, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Okay. You have an affidavit of service, so you have service and you can proceed. Carl Price. Thank you, sir. These are the what was the first name? Carl oh. Price. Oh, thank you, Mr. Price. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the previous order. Finding violation, page two of the order. Exhibit two, proof of ownership. Exhibit three, photographs of the violation. Any objection to these documents, sir? No. Thank you. All right, admitted without objection. So we seem to have a minivan that was last registered in 2016. Is correct. that correct? All right. So that's usually enough. All right, Mr. Uh, Price, they say you have an unregistered vehicle. I don't know if it's disabled or not, but it's supposed to be tagged and insured or kept in your garage. Well, uh, I, um, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but I try, I'm trying to get rid of it right now. Even today, I was on the phone trying to get rid of it. That's, that's, that's about it. It's, I just put a new alternator, a new radiator. I'm just trying to get rid of it. Right. Just, well, the problem with it is it probably works, right? It work, it's not really running right now because I know what happened to it. But Okay. Well, the problem is it's not insured and it's not moving, and those are the village requirements under their ordinance. Is that correct, Council? Correct. Okay. So... You know, you've got an un -op or a un unlicensed vehicle that's not working in your yard and it's going to get you a fine. I, I, I really didn't know that I have to get it right. It's got to be functionally working. It, um, I sure. couldn't have it parked there for, you know, saying. But if, if I could get some time, like a couple of weeks, I'd get, get it done and get rid of it. The, the problem with this is that the time to do that was the violation hearing. If you would ask me for a couple more weeks, I almost give everyone extra time because that's their prize for showing up. I mean, if you're going to, you know, spend part of your evening with me and you're going to ask for time to fix the violation, I'd give that to you. But right now, we're at the point that, you know, the violation has occurred and it's time for the fine to be assessed. And I'm sure the village is going to say they want the fine assessed. Otherwise, it's just going to go on and on. Now, if you can drag that into your garage, it'll be... It'll be okay if you can drag it off your property. It'll be okay, but it can't just sit there. Okay, do I understand? So you you're gonna give me some time so I can drag it into the garage. I can make some space in there and well, drag it in there. You, they're gonna tell me that the fine's gonna be what three hundred twenty-five. Three hundred twenty-five. It's been out of compliance for thirteen days. Correct. All right, and here here's something for everyone in the room. Say he goes home tonight, clears out his garage, pushes that thing in there, and closes it up, and it's all fine. It doesn't count until you call code enforcement and have them verify. It. Yeah, I always go. So, so my suggestion to you is get it moved as soon as you can, and call them when you got it halfway in, so they can stop the fine. 
Okay. okay. They can, if this is your homestead, they can't foreclose on the property. They can't really do anything, but the fine will stop. So okay. that's what you really need to do. Either get it off the property or get it in the garage and then call them ASAP. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give them the $325. It's going to be 25 bucks more a day. You can stop it in a couple of days if you can get it in there or get it off. Either or. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sorry, but that's what I have to do. 325 plus continuous granted. Thank you. Moving now to page two, fourth one down, 19-1415, 826 Hibiscus Drive, TAH 2017-2 Borrower, LLC. Dana Foley, Code Officer for the Village of Royal Palm Beach. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Okay. Well, something's still growing here. All right. Sign green card equals service. You can proceed. All right, sir, please state your name for the record. Hello, I'm Sean Romani. Can you spell your last name, sir? R-A-M-A-N-I. Thank you. And your relation to the property? I am a staff member of the company who owns the property. Okay. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that the board would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the previous order finding violation with the green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. And exhibit three is photographs of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents? No, I do not. Thank you, sir. All right, so you're basically pointing out that big green hedgy thing in the front, right? Along the side of the driveway. All right. To be four feet. Okay. Electric clippers, manual clippers, any kind of clippers. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how far right are we? The normal 13 days, and or is this correct? More? Yep, it's been out for 13 days, so 325 and continuing. I mean, I just tagged that other guy. What am I going to do with you? Pretty much the same thing. Understood. Yeah, um, yeah just get it clipped down to the front. Front is four feet. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Get it down to four feet. Call them while you're clipping it. They'll come yeah. by. They'll stop the fine. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. 325 plus continue is granted. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to page three, repeat violation hearings, case 19-1712-12031, Southern Boulevard, Red Apple at Palms West, LLC. I'm sorry. Special Magistrate at the top, we're staying. Fine okay. mitigation 19-1359-1209, Moonlight Way, Alexandra Bricari Estate. Where are we now? Oh. Page three, second one down. Someone down. Okay. Three. Got it. Is anybody here for 1209 Moonlight Way? Did someone sign in for 1209 Moonlight? 1209 Moonlight Way. Okay. Margaret Hancock for the Village of Old Palm Beach Code Enforcement. I'd like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, previous order finding violation affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Okay, you have an affidavit of service. It worked. You have someone there, so please proceed. Sir, your name for the record? Edward Reiner. Could you spell last name, please? R-E-I-N-E-R. -E -E Just how it sounds, Edward. And your relation to the property or to the estate? I'm the owner. Okay. Before you get there, let me show you these documents and we'll get to yours okay. in a second. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the previous order finding violation. Page two of the order. Original mailing. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. And exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? Nope. Thank you, sir. All right, admitted without objection. All right, so pictures make it look obvious. So Fences in disrepair on that side. Yeah, they have applied for a fence permit today, but they have not obtained it yet. Okay, and that takes a couple of weeks to process if they don't have anything. Likely. Okay. All right, Mr. Reiner, uh, what's your response? It obviously looks like you're going to fix the fence, but it doesn't look like it happened in the time that they wanted. I'm not hearing you that well. I'm sorry. All right, it looks like you want to fix the fence, but you hadn't applied in the time that they requested on. 
And how did you end up with the property? I purchased the property originally, and I took back a mortgage. It was in the it was in the uh, young lady's name, and she passed away uh, within the past year from an overdose, from a drug overdose. And since then, I've had an attorney um, attempting to foreclose, which coincidentally just happened to happen finally just before this past weekend. And I have the title here in my name and I met a real estate broker at the property over the, over the weekend, and that was the first time I saw the, uh, the notices on the door. I hadn't been over there in a couple of months. I had somebody from the neighborhood taking care of the property, but he told me that he never saw the, uh, the information on the door. And... Yeah, uh, unfortunately, state statute requires that they, being the village of Royal Palm Beach, mail the notices to the last address on the tax collector's roll because they assume that they're being paid. I don't know whose address they mailed it to. It's probably the deceased ladies. Yeah. Okay. At the house. Um, I did pay the real estate taxes in November. Okay. It, it sounds like you're going to probably end up with a fine going until you get your fence um, fixed, and then the fine will stop. And then you're going to come in back in for a reduction and you explain to me that you didn't get notice and tell me your story again because that's when I can do something for you. Okay. Okay. You've already got your, your plans in. When they issue your plan and they fix the fence, they'll stop the fine. And huh? then you can come back for a reduction. I understand that if you, you know, didn't get any notice, it would be very difficult for you to remediate the problem. I wasn't living at the property. Right. I understand. That's why I'm saying... And I have a, uh, a, an agreement for the fence to be... I have no doubt that you're going to have the fence fixed. The guy would not have come in for the permit unless you were going to go forward. Sure. All I'm telling you is right now I'm at the fine stage. I have to do a fine. If we could, if, since it sounds like they there's want some to do re else. recent developments, if we could continue this to the next if, hearing, the village is fine with that. Then I don't even have to worry. They saved you. So, All right, continue to... 212. When's the meeting? 212 is the is the hearing date. So make it a few days before that. 210. 210, 212. Or maintain the $25 a status, day fine. Status fine. So we could go either way. All right. So since the village has just heard about the circumstances, they're giving you additional time in which to fix the property. You have until February 10th. So you should have enough time to get your permit issued and your fence done. I will have a new fence there this weekend. Well, if you're, you're jumping the permit process there. Uh -huh. They're really supposed to issue the permit first. They applied today. Right, so if he goes and fixes it this weekend, it's kind of like doing it without a permit. Right, wait to get the permit before you do that. Wait to get the permit first. I have the permit. No, you have applied for the permit. They actually don't give you one for another week or three. Oh. It hasn't been issued yet. So wait till it's issued, and then you can have the work done. But, they're, but the village is giving you until February 10th. So as long as the permit is issued and the work is done before February 10th, you will be good. Okay? Okay. Um, All right. Do we need a new address for him? Because obviously these things are not going to go to her if she's deceased. No, well, he, going, has, he has actual yeah. service of the next hearing, so he'll, okay, he great. just told it to him. It'll be in the order that All he right, gets. So come here on the 10th unless you've already fixed it and the village tells you not to show up because you're done. Okay? Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your Continuance Honor. is Thank granted you. until 210 or appear at the 212 fine assessment hearing or face a $25 a day fine. Thank you. Thank now you. going Next. to the repeat violation hearings 19 1712 12031 Southern Boulevard, Red Apple at Palms West LLC. Code section is 15132. The planning areas are overgrown. I observed this on 11 25 19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 11 25 19 and I have actual service. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, order finding violation. Exhibit three, verification of ownership. Exhibit four, pictures. Okay. 
So by actual service, you mean you spoke to them directly? I actually through emails. Okay. All right. I don't know if I'd describe them as overgrown, but I describe them as probably not up to code. All right, sir, your name is? Greg Tallman. Could you spell your last name, please, Greg? T-A-L-L-M-A-N. And your relation to the property? Facility supervisor. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, the notice of violation, and the service confirmation signed green card, previous order of finding repeat violation. Exhibit three is proof of ownership. And exhibit four, photographs of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents, sir? No. Thank you. All right, admit without objection. <clears throat> okay. So the planning areas are over. Are over There's uh, weeds through them and Those trash. are the weeds. I thought that was no, actually. They, it was overgrown and it's damaged the plants beyond repair. They won't grow back. So I know I've told you that we were in the process of trying to get the permit. They didn't seem to get the permit before I showed up. I was hoping that would help me out a little bit there. Uh, it would. So he's applied for the permit to repair all this? Um, I'm not showing anything in the computer yeah, that something's been down. applied for, and I just heard okay. that the other day. All right, so he probably just applied for it because it, you know, yes. if it would have been issued, it would have been applied for a couple, two or three weeks back. So what are you asking for here since we're at the fine assessment stage? This is a repeat violation. It's been out of compliance for 45 days at $125 a day, so we're asking for a fine of $5,625 and continuing until compliance is achieved. Okay, well, is it $125 a day on that order? Yes, wow. sir. That's different. Normally I'm at a more even amount. All right, so 5,000. Wait a minute. No, it is an uncompliance. I know, that's why I say 5,000 what? 25,625. All right, so they say you were supposed to fix this 45 days ago. I signed an order. It didn't come to fruition. Hopefully you'll stop it soon. Maybe you'll come back for a reduction. Who knows? But where I am now, $5,625 plus continuing is all I can do. A file for a reduction hearing? Yeah, after you get it fixed. You can't okay. even file right. for the hearing until it's no problem. got an affidavit of compliance. Right, thank, you. thank you. All right, next. Page four, violation hearings, 19-166369, Mahoris Drive, Margaret Sell and Chelsea Howell. The code section is 6190H, shutters are closed. I observed this violation on 11-15-19, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back, signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Okay. You have a signed green card. Do you have service? Did you say your name for record? Chelsea Howell. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is a notice of hearing, the notice of violation, the signed green card. Mm -hmm. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Mm -hmm. And exhibit three is a photograph of the violation. Any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. Okay. They're accordion shutters. No, they're not. Oh, well, they don't look like no, it. No, and I, I closed on my house in the end of June, and I was out of town actually during Dorian, so my um, uncle had to come and put them up and was had to work with what he had, and the owner obviously had the house for like 20-something years, and so I removed, as soon as I got the notification, I removed all of my shutters, but the back two um, hardware is actually like eroded on. My ex-husband was supposed to come and remove them last weekend. However, he couldn't get them off. So I have hired a um, shutter company that's like licensed and insured to come on Sunday and remove them. But obviously I was unable to do so. Okay, well, I guess this is the violation part of our you know program where you get additional time to fix these things. So what's your... Uh, we're asking what's, what's, for compliance by February 27th or appearance at the 227 March or, or 311 fine hearing or $25 a day. Oh, that'll not be a problem. That's not yeah, a problem. That's, that's yeah, it'll be, be long easy. gone by then. But please, as soon as they come down, 
call them and schedule an inspection so you get an affidavit of compliance. The same number I've been calling, or like not been calling, but the one yesterday, okay. Mm -hmm. The same number. It's the only part of my order that's in bold. Yes. Got you. So just no call problem. them. They'll give you an affidavit of compliance. You'll be free and clear, and you'll be good. Awesome. Thank Take you. Take care. Yeah. Happy New Year. Next. Thank you. Thank you. Next is 19-1763-10479 Southern Boulevard, JBL Village Shops, LLC, JBL Village Shops 2, LLC, and JBL Village Shops 3, LLC. Okay, JBL. The code section Why, is 2041. The description is flag banner is prohibited signage. I observed this violation on 12-8-19. Now the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, picture. And exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. See, he's already fixed it. All right, sir, your name, please. My name is Mikhail Yankov, Y-A-N-K-O-V. What's your last name? Y-A-N-K-O-V. You're behind the time here, it's Mikhail. <laughs> Y-A-N-K-O-V. All right, you've already fixed it, but Correct. They have to show you papers or they'll die. I know. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits of Would you like to enter into evidence? Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, the notice of violation, the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. <coughs> Exhibit three is a photograph of the violation. Yeah, and I have one. Sure, and this yeah. is the important one. Exhibit four is the affidavit of compliance. Any objection to these documents? No, no objections. Thank All right, you, you will be issued something called a finding of fact, which means you fixed it, but you fixed it after the violation notice was issued so don't do it again or you'll get be a repeat violator you've got five years before that falls off so let the tenants know flags aren't good but okay. no fine so far thank you no fine just a finding of fact okay yeah. finding a fact is granted okay. next next page five nineteen dash one five five four eight sixty nine orchid drive terry l cooper and wayne johnson Code sections are 2318, B2D, 06190A1, 3 and 5, and 91. Restricted trailer parked in the rear yard and in public view. Driveway and sidewalk are stained. Fence installed without a permit. Okay. I observed this on 103019. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 103019 and were signed for on 114019. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Okay. The orange thing I take it's the trailer? In the back, yes. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit of clarification there. All right, so you have a signed green card, you do have service. Your name, ma'am? Terry Cooper. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Would you like to enter into evidence? Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, okay. the notice of violation, and the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three is photographs okay. of the violation. Do you have any <coughs> objection? Oh, sorry, one more picture. Any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. All right, admitted without objection. Okay, so the restricted trailer can be is it is it allowed if they screen it? Yes, but it, the, all that is it, everything's a finding of fact except for the fence. Oh, okay, so they they fixed it all except for the fence, and they just have to come into it for a permit for the fence. Yes. Okay. Finding of fact for all this. Yeah, the only code section that's still out of compliance is nine one, and we'd be asking for compliance by two twenty seven or the. I'm going to give a little Venn diagram going here. All right, and this is a 227 or 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. And okay, so you fixed everything except the fence and you're applying for a fence permit, correct? I, yes. Okay, that's all you have to do and get it issued and then you can fix it or then it's good, right? I'll ask you after it's inspected. So, all right, so you're going to get an order from me saying that you fixed the trailer and the driveway and sidewalk. It's going to be called a finding effect on that part. You're going to, part of the order is going to say you need to get the fence permitted by the end of February, February 27th. Okay. Or you have to come back for the code enforcement hearing on March 11th and face a $25 a day fine. I have a question. Sure. 
Okay, when it says fence installed without a permit, um, it been up there when I bought the house. It was already there, I, so I don't understand. That's what I'm not understanding. Yeah, well, the problem is a lot of people will put things up like a fence and they won't permit it. Even worse, they'll put up a shed and they won't permit it. Then they'll put the shed in the setback. And then they'll sell the house and you'll buy the house with the shed and the setback and you bought a problem. So you just oh. bought a problem. You really need to uh, just try to get it permitted as an owner builder. Is this your homestead property? Yes. All right. You can, you can get a permit as the owner to put a fence up, correct? Yes. And then if you get the permit, they'll just come by and inspect it and it should all be good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I will sign that order. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're moving to page eight of the agenda, 19-1731, 10651 Southern Boulevard, 10200 Okeechobee, LLC. Oh, Code sections are 15141, 6195, 2349, 6190A5, and 15133. The description is landscape not maintained, unhealthy and or missing. Roof and building is stained. Stop sign in the northwest corner is leaning. Also the clear site zone leaving the northwest exit um, is blocked. Um, the sidewalks along Southern Boulevard and 103rd Avenue are stained. And the excessive signage is not on this violation. Okay, excessive That's, signage is out? Yes. Okay, I'll remove that. So this was this was cited on 12-3-2019. It was sent certified mail return receipt requested on 12-3-2019, and it was signed for on 12-7-2019. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. And Exhibit 4, the uh, letter from the village arborist as well as the markup of the landscape plan. Also from the arbor. A lot of pictures. Okay, you have a signed green card, you have service. Please tell us your names. Yes, hello, Benisa Levin. What is it? Benisa, B-E-N-I-S-A, last name L-E-V-I-N. Okay. And your attorney? Attorney, yes. Okay. Is he gonna speak? Probably not, but okay, he's, he's here with us. So if he does, we'll, we'll get his name then, that's fine. Um, these are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. -I -S -S this is the notice of violation. Benisa. Notice of hearing. Green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Okay. Exhibit three. L E V I N. Photographs of the violations. And this is the letter exhibit or four. Exhibit four is a letter from the village arborist. Have you seen this or do you want to read it? Well, one one through three we were we can attest to. However, this final one we did not receive until we had an email from Miss Walker when I called to inquire. Okay, we'll get there. Okay. Arborist, and as she said, the final exhibit five is the marked up site, or excuse me, landscape. She's trying. 
You got to dig it out first. Do you have any objection to these documents? I don't like being embarrassed. Um, we object. Is there proof of how this was sent, the arborist document? It's not required to be sent to you, you mean? No, to send to the landlord. That would not be a requirement to be at this hearing tonight, but um, it's here tonight to discuss at this hearing. Okay. Any other objection? You we, objected we to this only document object. not getting a copy? Right. Well, That's we objected. Her, her objection is that she didn't receive a copy for, of Formal this. notice of that. Limits four or five. Which formal notice, yes. Admitted we over objection. That we'll made it there. easy. Thank you. Right, thank you. Admitted. Okay. So we've got a pile of stuff, right? But most of it looks like landscaping issues. There, well, a lot of trees and things. Yeah. So as far as like the clear sight zone, when you pull up to the exit and you try to look to the right to see if traffic's coming, you cannot see at all. Um, the sidewalks are stained. There's dead landscape. There's also missing landscape. Um, they're staining on the building. The roof is stained. Um, the canopy for the gas pumps, all that stained. The fascia around that stained. Um, so, yeah. Okay. All right. So. Go right ahead. Okay, I'm here to represent the landlord, and the property is leased to 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, it's leased to corporate, but this property is being run, it's being run by an operator, a franchise operator. So the first time we actually met the franchise operator was today. So as far as the knowing what to fix and finding out about these issues, we, we are trying our best. We received the notice about a month ago. Um, we did find out that there was a village arborist letter and plan. We found it out when they called Ms. Walker. We did not receive a letter or any information that before, uh, ahead of time. So we didn't have those several months or whatever it may have been since the village arborist letter. We contacted 7-Eleven. We're trying to go through their formal channels. However, I sent them notice and we received notice, but then we received the arborist notes and the arborist letters, which was additional information. So the additional information was then sent to our tenant and that's being communicated to the franchise operator. So we know the franchise operator does want to work on this. I do have a question. Do they require permits for any of those issues? Um, yes, so for the uh, landscape that is dead and needs to be removed, our code requires that you obtain a vegetation removal permit. And do you know how long those take? Mm -hmm. Usually it's a it's a pretty quick turnaround, seven to ten days. Seven to ten days. Okay. okay, great. Thank you for telling me that information. Mm -hmm. So basically, right. as someone who represents the landlord, we're trying to get this done. We just have to go through the proper channels and make sure now that the information is properly communicated, if possible, we would like some additional time because again, he's going to need a permit. There are several issues. It's not just one or two issues being addressed, and we do want to make right by the city and make sure this gets taken care of. We want the village to be happy, and we want this to be a. This is when you show up and you ask great, for more time. This is, yes. this is good. All right. So when did you want this done by? We're asking for compliance by February 27th or appearance at the March 11th fine hearing. All right. Since they showed up and they're asking for additional time, I'm going to give them until the next meeting cycle. So whatever that is. The April. Yeah. Fine. Give them April. Um, I understand there are issues between landlords and tenants, but you, you know, you've got to get it fixed because the landlord is the one who gets fined, not the tenant. And you may be able to claw it back through your lease, but I don't even know if you want to do that. So what, what are the, fours, the four dates? So we can fly by 330 or the 48 hearing. That's wonderful. 330, hold on. For Monday. Yeah. Well, our agenda has to be done. Yeah, you're gonna have to hunt out red maple trees. I saw as part of that is right. Exactly. Yeah, it's all, to track down, so. it's all fun. down. So it's all fun. You know, you they can find them. They can find anything. Yeah. You Google it. Are we able to get copies of those pictures that were shown to us as part of the evidence? They'll, they'll probably email them to you. Just Great, thank you. I appreciate get, that. Get Linda's contact information. She's happy to I, get stuff fixed. I never mind sharing my photos, but I don't want you to think that my photos show everything that you need. You had the landscape thing that was marked up by Cutler and Hearing. Yes. So that's a good start of what was missing. Additional could have been missing in the last seven months since that, because um, that original markup was June 17th. Okay, but so, um, but no, I think there's a palm that's gone. I don't have a picture. 
showing where that was gone, but I don't want you to think that my photos are all inclusive. It doesn't show everything that's wrong on the property. Okay, well, you just need to go through the landscape plan and <coughs> say there's a tree there, yep. There's a bush there, yep. Fine. That kind of thing. All right, 33488, and what's the amount? $25 a day fine. So they're not even. I'm sorry, I didn't really hear what you said. 33485, $25 a day. 34825 a day. And the 25 a day would begin on 48 if this is not done? It'll begin on 331. One. On the three, it begins. 331, okay, great. So then we have to get the photos. And are there, are, are there any recommended landscaping companies that have worked with the city or have done a good job that we just find someone who's. We don't. Just anybody, okay. We're not just allowed checking. to recommend. You can always go on our website. Our website will show all the businesses that are licensed with, vil with the village that are village based. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Yeah, will we receive um, a communication of this or just what I have written down? Plus, we'll um, contact what Walker you're going to do is you're going to give your card to Miss Walker so she can We've, send you. I think I sent yes, you an email. We have email just back and forth. Shoot me an email just to remind me that you yeah, want those photos. Yeah, she'll send you a courtesy copy by statute, and we're required to send them right. to the address to the on the tax but collector's roll. We'll also get a copy of an order that reflects tonight's ruling by the magistrate. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Next. Next is 19-1739-10641 Southern Boulevard. Roshram Abbasi Royal Palm LLC. The code section is 15141, 1254, 2060, 6195, 2349. Landscape not maintained. There's dead, dying, or missing landscape. Litter and trash on the property. There's excessive signage. The roof is stained. Parking lot striping is faded. And there's a large hole in the northwest corner of the parking lot by um, the utility boxes. This violation was observed on 12-4-2019. It was sent certified mail on 12-4-2019 and signed for on 12-10-2019. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. Okay, you have a signed green card, you have service. Almost look like my truck in your parking lot there. I buy parts from you too. So, I know the property. Uh, Douglas Botero, B-O-T-E-R-O. -E what was your first name? Joe Sabino, S-A-B-I-N-O. Thank you. Any relations to the property? I am a maintenance manager and he's my licensed contractor okay. landscaper. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that would you like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, excuse me, the notice of violation, the, the notice of hearing, thing. and the signed green card. Okay. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. I'll give Exhibit it. Exhibit three is photographs of the violations. Do you have any objections to these documents? No. Okay. Just a little cleanup. Uh, Mr. Votero, what's your first name? Uh, Douglas. Douglas. Same as me. <laughs> Didn't hear that at all. All right. Yes. And what is your position? I am a maintenance manager for AutoZone. All of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just sit around going, Who is, what was his name? How did you spell that? And they all checked with everybody. Okay. All right. Um, so you've listed the problems on the property and thrown out a bunch of pictures. Okay. All right. So um, what do you think? You've got pictures of your own, yeah, I see. Yes, we have pictures of our own and everything. I got my um, handyman there doing the pressure cleaning of the parking lot right now and cleaning the building and cleaning the dumpster area right now. Also, I have a and paving going to the property next week and restriping. And I have my licensed uh, contractor, a landscaper, assessing uh, the situation there and see what we need to bring that uh, property back into compliance. 
Okay, That's so what we're doing right now. Has your parking person gotten a permit? Do they need a permit to restripe? Yes. Uh, he will do the. He will get the uh, permit there. Well, he'll, he'll what I have done uh, that I don't need a, a permit is pressure washing and cleaning the property and remove the excess uh, signage. We, we don't need the permit for that. That's right, and I understand, done. and that's why I'm saying, you know, you're going to need a permit for the parking lot, and I'm probably going to give you additional time to make sure that all flows because it takes two or three weeks to get a permit normally. I don't know how long it takes to get it through engineering, but you won't have the permit next week. So, so don't I have them out. Company, I got my company going there and give me the pricing and everything so okay. I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll just them. try to make sure that all the time frames work for everyone. You may think you can go out there next week, but the permit won't be ready. <laughs> so you don't need to get the, the contractor out there yet. But I'm okay. probably going to give them a little bit more time to do all this since they're working on the non permitted portions already. And I have my parts there. So. Okay. What and about no, it's, the, uh, uh, landscaping uh, to. Um, I know it was a couple of dead plants in there that uh, a car hit and they were removed. Uh, we didn't uh, apply for any permit or anything like that. Uh, it was obstructing the way, so we removed it several months ago. Right. Uh, so you have vegetation that's missing, landscape correct, that's missing. Yes. You also have a royal palm that's been cut. Mm -hmm. That's going to need a vegetation removal permit. That'll need to be removed and replaced. Um, in the back, and let's see, over here you'll see these photos of the uh, oak trees. Uh -huh. um, I think you'll see that those need to be replaced. This one over here all the way to the, we don't have a mouse. There's actually three oak trees in the back. Yeah, but this one has a little bit of green on it, but you'll have to assess as to... You'll have to assess as to whether or not um, that needs to be replaced. Um, I believe it does, but we'll leave that up to you. Um, and this is the third one that definitely needs to be replaced. <coughs> and this is where the FPNL box is. We're going to have to contact the utilities because it might be their responsibility to fix that. It very well we'll, may be, but if, if someone we will, trips we will and falls, contact. Well, we'll put caution tape on, on that today. Right, and you have some like rebar and it's kind of leaning out into the parking lot. You definitely uh, want to shore. And there. I don't know that I would necessarily use rebar. I don't know that that's really the safest thing. You have a lot of pedestrian traffic through there, believe it or not. Okay. Um, there's, uh, you also have a coconut palm. Um, and there's the bronzing going on with those trees in the back. Right. Um, you know, can I contact you and talk about acceptable replacements if we can do that? Unfortunately, we don't, we don't actually have like a swap list for species. So if you're changing species on your landscape plan and it's less than 10%, um, you can do a minor site plan modification and go through and try to have it administratively done. But as to just talking to me to swap it out, no, you, you're gonna have to do some type of site plan modification. It's just <laughs> how many and how many species are you gonna change out as to determine whether it's a minor or major site plan mod. And just for the record, that percentage was being in increased to 20. I, it's had first reading, I'm not sure if second reading has happened, but it's okay. close. Well, by the time we hit it, because I'm probably gonna give them the same time frame as I gave the other people, just to be fair. So um, we're looking at the end of March again. and If they're April. looking, at, to be honest, if, they're, if they have um, the lethal bronzing going on and they're gonna have to do a site plan modification, they're gonna need more yeah. than March. Well, I, well, I'll give them March and just do a status Fine assessment, unless you want to give them more. I'm, I, I'm, I honestly, I would prefer to just give, give them, them more, more go ahead. and um, well, then to keep bringing great. status back. So tell, tell us when. And who do how I much, contact for a change in staff? Well, that's going to be planning. So um, how long do you think that you need for starters to assess the property? Uh, we, we've assessed the property today. So you, you already have that together? Um, when's the second reading coming through? I, if, it's probably this month. Okay. Um, why don't we just do like a May date? May, June? Let's do June. Let's do comply by the end of May and then June. Okay. All right, so 5.30 something, 29-ish, whatever the weekday is. 
It'd be May 29th. 529 or, or the 6 June 10th hearing 610 or $25 a day fine so that's to actually go through and replace any landscape that you need to and obtain your site plan yeah, yeah, modification 529 yeah. yeah so get done what you can get done which is the clean out the trash straighten out the signs like tomorrow clean all that the stuff sidewalks will be done call them as it happens so they can see the progress that you're making so if you have I'll to come email, back you'll uh, you'll have it tomorrow morning when i get back to the property and yeah. i'll let her know what we have done the only thing that um that i heard that i just want to clarify because i thought you said that you had people out there pressure cleaning the parking lot yes i do you didn't have to pressure clean the parking lot it's asphalt. Well, there were oil stains and garbage and stuff okay. like that so i got my handyman there going okay. there and be no, proactive pressure, right. pressure and, cleaning and is not permitted it. or okay. not that's requiring what I, a permit that's what so. I, I yeah. need some stuff <laughs> yeah, that is i don't need a permit that i can show that yes i know i just going. wanted you to know i didn't require you to pressure clean the parking that's line. fine okay we needed to do it anyway so okay extras don't hurt all right 529 six ten or 25 dollars granted thank you thank you, thank you very much thank okay you. next, next is 19-1717-1104 royal palm beach boulevard ramco crossroads at royal palm so the code sections are 2661, 204111, parens 11, 2349, parens A, parens 6, parens B, parens D, 2629, and 2632, parens D, parens 6. The descriptions, vehicle parked in the parking lot with prohibited signage on them. Vehicles are being stored in the parking lot. Crates and pallets are being stored in the parking area. I am removing the description of hanging marquee signs um, being installed without a permit as I'm going to work with the property manager further on that. Okay. I would, uh, okay. this violation was observed and sent certified mail on 12-2-2019 two, and it was signed for on 12-5-2019. Um, I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, pictures. Um, the original notice of hearing went out with the 2019 date on it. And the property manager brought that to my attention. And I re-mailed a new one, or emailed her a new one. Okay. With a 2020 20 date. date on it. It's gonna take a little getting used to. All right, do you have a signed green card? Do you have service? Is the last section 26-32 paren D paren 6 off? Is that the one you removed? No. No, Just okay. Just the description. Just the description. Okay. Probably applies to other things then. My name is Jana Lodum, I'm an attorney with the law firm of Holland and Knight with offices at 515 East Las Solas, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, here on behalf of the uh, ownership interest as well as the property manager, Thank RBT you. Realty. Thank Great. You. Could, you re could you spell your last name because you Certainly. just zipped through that? I'll do my first and the last because they're both odd. Jana is J-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, and the last name is L-H-O-T-A. All right. I, I shorted you an N. <laughs> These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter mm -hmm. into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of violation, mm -hmm. the notice of hearing, sign green card. Exhibit two is verification of ownership. Let me quick see that. Where's the owner listed? Yes, that's correct. Exhibit three is photographs of the violation, violations. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse me, Your Honor. We have the counsel for, uh, and I'm make sure I give the correct name. Best French Fries Inc. DBA is Dodo Donuts, which is the tenant uh, of the, some of the vehicles that are shown in the photographs. So I'd just like to have him up here as well and to identify himself. 
Michael Brown, Brown and Associates, on behalf of Best French Fries, also known as Dodo's Donuts. Dodo's Donuts. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> Only know Mr. Brown for like 25 years. For the record, those are my clients' vehicles that are in the pictures that are identified so far. Some of my clients. We'll, we'll put them on the screen. That's the back of a truck, I can tell you that much. And I, I actually, on the first photograph, I didn't know what vehicle that was, if, that, if it was a vehicle, was the issue. It's this one right here. We'll, let's put them up on the screen. Okay, so that's great. So Thank you. Looking. Sure. And then the additional exhibit was the... That was emailed, I believe. Yeah. Correct. Any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um... Okay, so we have pictures of most of all this stuff, and mm -hmm. I, I did my Town of Glen Ridge meeting last night, and I've been their town attorney for a mere, like, 31 years now. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're just not paying attention. That's okay. No, I didn't know and and I, I finished my meeting, and I went down to the Greek place, and I looked at the corner, and I saw your dodo donuts with oh. the sign there and the brown paper in the wall, and I'm like, oh, okay, another donut place coming in. So at least I know where it's located. All right, good. And if, if we could, they had questions about the photographs, if we could have those projected. Sure, yeah. put them on up and tell them what your issues are with them. So well, we in the first photograph, um, and a, just, just to, if, I, if I might clarify just a few things before we get to that, and I apologize if I'm going out of, out of turn here, but um, with respect to the notice of violation, I, I appreciate certainly the ability to, to work with them with respect to the marquee signage. There was one other item, um, I believe, that, that I thought had been resolved, and that was the mulch that was being stored on pallets temporarily in the parking lot. Is that item off the notice yes. of violation? Okay. I just wanted to However, clear. it is the same code section of these pallets that you see here. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to ask the question. I didn't know if it, that sign related to the vehicle or if it related to something else. And I know that we've spoken with um, Ms. Middleton about that and she's yeah. going to address that. So this is, yeah, these are the pallets and crates that are outside of Publix. Usually they'll put them in here and then they pull them out when the delivery truck's coming because they get a delivery and then they get picked up. But you know when they're ready to be picked up because they wrap them in cellophane, typically. Um, so that's what's that first that's fine I just because I understood from the notice of violation that it related to um, pallets that had mulch on it that was in the parking lot um, um, out front and which had which is since obviously they were there temporarily just till the mulch could be spread and they're removed but I understand this is like a new issue that no we're, we're addressing. it's not a new issue so it said crates pallets and mulch stored in the parking lot Okay, I'm so, sorry. I, I just thought it was related to that one. If it's yeah, not, no. that's fine. We're going to address it regardless. The, the We're going to address was it regardless. On pallets, but I was also citing the crates and the pallets as well. Understood. Understood. Um, and then in this photo, you'll see that there's um, the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vehicles again. Um, this is an extension cord that's running from the vehicle and is closed in the door there. and more i just took a photo of all the extension cords there because there were um there was one truck it looks like it plugged into another extension cord that was running underneath this truck here all right. so all right okay okay <clears throat> can i take it that's not vehicle storage permitted areas in the back well and on top of that um this bay is this tenant is not licensed in this to be here by okay, the village so of Royal Palm Beach. Got it. So, they so the that. bay itself is under construction. They have a commercial interior renovation permit. It's not been finaled out. But on top of that, you're not allowed to use the, the parking lot for storage of vehicles. And to, I mean, right now, that's exactly what that is. Okay, well, they're using it for storage and they're not even permitted to be there yet. Is that correct? Yeah, they're not licensed with us yet. Okay. Just getting the lay of the land here. 
Okay, well, again, Jana Loda, counsel for the property ownership and property manager. Um, in a few moments, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brown, who's going to present uh, the case because his client is the client that you see with the vehicles there and the um, the uh, the tenant of the space that's apparently in the process of currently being built out. Um, one thing, and I, I'd like just to reserve a few minutes after he makes his presentation, if it's warranted, um, with respect to um, this particular issue. So with that, if I may, I'll turn it over to him, and then if I may, I just would like to reserve a few moments at the end. Okay, go right ahead, Mr. Brown. Thank you, uh, Mr. Magistrate. Michael Brown on behalf of Dodo's Donuts. Uh, first of all, I want to point out, and I'm here to speak just on the issues pertaining to my client, uh, particularly regarding in the notices of violations regarding the property manager, for them to say that uh, there are uh, storage on the property. Well, first I'll deal with the signage issue. When you look at the citations that they have in the notice to the property manager, they're citing it under the sign code. So all of the alleged violations would pertain to any vehicle or any sign that was on the property. My client has four to five food trucks. Their Dodo's Donuts, their base of operation is Dodo's Donuts. They are in the process of getting their, they're building out and revamping that premises in there. And the only reason they haven't completed it is because there have been some delays through the village of Royal Palm Beach and going through with the permitting process and what have you. But they have working very closely with the building department of Royal Palm Beach. And I don't think that department has any problems with the quality of the work uh, and the procedure that's been going on there in that facility. Now, Pertaining to this alleged issue of signage violation of the, of, on the property as a result of the vehicles, our position is that Royal Palm, the Code Enforcement Department, is misinterpreting their statute, their ordinance. When you look at the violations that they have, it's under the sign code. And so therefore, my, if my client was using its vehicles as a sign to announce to the public that Dodo's Donuts was in this shopping center, that would be a different situation. Those trucks come and go every day. They go to different places around the county and other parts of the county, and in the evening they come in. They're not there as a sign. They are there just like you see a Coke truck or a Frito-Lay truck or a UPS truck. They go and they come. Number two, they're not there for storage. Those vehicles are refrigerated. They just come in at night and they go out on assignment in the daytime. So from a practical standpoint, our position, and when I met with the folks from code enforcement, I uh, strongly suggested that they look at the ordinance and understand that the alleged violations as it pertains to my client, that they were misciting or relying up, improperly relying upon the sign section of the code. My client's vehicles are not there as signs. My client's vehicles come and go just like other vehicles come and go. In fact, there's a business right next door to it. Uh, I think it's in the chemical business, right next door to it, with signs on their vehicle. And they, they have their vehicles that come and go every day, just like my client's vehicles come and go every day. Okay. All right. And so uh, I, I think when you look at the sections that they cited, even in the notice of violation to the property manager, and again, Although we're not cited in there, we do have, we are, um, we certainly have standing because we have a lease with the property owner. Uh, we spent a lot of money on that lease, and that lease says that we have to be in compliance with the village's ordinances. And to the extent that they are citing the property manager and the property owner for allegedly violating the ordinance, when you look at their ordinance, our position is that legally, they are misinterpreting their ordinance to allege that a violation. If my client's trucks were parked out by the main road with a big sign on it telling all the public that Dodo's Donuts is in this shopping center, come visit us, that would be an applicable section of the code to cite. That's not the situation. These vehicles are in the back of the building, they come and go every day, and that's what uh, our position is. Okay, uh, we're gonna stop for one second and let the village Attorney, respond if she desires to this. I, I would just call attention. I certainly respectfully disagree um, with our 
alleged misinterpretation of the code, you'll see the code section cited are both um, chapter 20 and 23. Chapter 20 is the village's sign code. Chapter 23 is the traffic and vehicle section of the code. Um, there are two, excuse me, one section of each cited. So to say that we have cited them only under the village's sign code is uh, incorrect, and I certainly would disagree with that. Um, I would also point out that these vehicles, while they're parked in the back, are parked in designated stripe parking spaces, which are site plan parking spaces. They're not storage areas. So there is required parking for this, this plaza. Um, you can't park trucks there just to store trucks there. Those are parking spaces for employees, for patrons, for anyone else who, who frequents the establishment. Anything to add? Um, we would not allow the extension cord to be strung out and through the back door. That's not. Correct, that's, a, that's a, actually a fire safety issue. Yeah. Um, we're not here for that today, but um, they should be put on notice of that as well. Okay, so section 23-49, is that, what is that? That's the? Traffic and vehicle section of the code. Did I look at it for a sec here? <coughs> channel Loda once again on behalf of the property owner um, if I may um, I would appreciate if your honor might consider a brief continuance of this so that we can have some further discussions with the village on this item in particular village attorney's office uh, first and foremost I want to reemphasize what mr. Brown indicated which is that our leases do require that our tenants comply with all of the codes and regulations of the village uh, so we certainly want to make sure that whatever is happening out there is consistent with what the village um, has either approved or is covered by the regulations. With respect to the notice of violation, um, specifically section 20-41 subsection 11, which is what's cited in the notice of violation, that section basically prohibits vehicular signs in business districts, which is what this is, when the total sign area is in excess of 10 square feet um, and when you meet some other criteria. One is that it has to be parked for more than 60 minutes within 100 feet of the public right-of-way. It's also parking within 100 feet of the right-of-way such that it's visible from the right-of-way. And, it's a conjunctive word, and, not or, um, it's not regularly used in con the conduct of the business advertised or when it's being utilized primarily for signage, which is what Mr. Brown highlighted. Okay. But I'm um, looking at section 23-49, which is the parking code. Okay, and that one I can address as well, Your Honor. Right ahead. Um, that section, as you know, requires, it prohibits the use of required parking, which I think is a key term here, uh, and loading areas for the following uses, which they cited subsection B, which is to store any goods, material, or inventory used in conjunction with the business, or for the display of signs and advertising devices. Um, this center does have more parking than what is required by the code, so it's, there's an argument that they're not parking necessarily in required parking, because we do have a surplus of parking at the, the shopping center. They are using spaces that are at the rear of the center. Um, and then the last thing I would add just to that is simply that, um, and forgive me here, uh, is that the concept which you know in the law is that you have to view all sections of the code to give every section meaning. So when you look at that in connection with the section in the sign code, I would argue that it would only prohibit vehicles within non-required spaces that meet the requirements of the prohibited sign section, which is 20 dash uh, right. 4111, I, which I do not believe that we meet. But that aside, um, I know this tenant, I've spoken with their, their counsel beforehand. We want to make sure that whatever they have out there is something that um, is approved by the village. So I'd like the opportunity to be able to make sure that we can see if there's a path going forward 
to have these vehicles parked there um, and you know if not that we just kind of clearly understand where we're at that's all all right this is my Publix I live here I've been around the back of that place I know pretty much every store there bought a tire from tire kingdom for my truck in the last month my UPS place is there and I'm getting to mr. Brown's UPS analogy UPS trucks can go anywhere they can stop they'll be there they're not advertising they go my UPS place is there if they put a UPS truck there in the front and left it there that would be a violation of the code they don't they put a UPS truck and stored it overnight in the back and left it there, that would be a violation of the code, especially subsection A, which is inoperable vehicle storage. You know, they are required to have a certain amount of spaces. Their site plan hopefully met that requirement. But the UPS trucks eventually go home to UPS truck land where they are parked in a properly allowed storage area because the UPS drivers don't take them home. And, and, and that is what I'm looking at. The sign code argument, I buy. I mean, I've had enough cases in the village where, you know, you're not supposed to park in the first few spaces. You know, you have to be 100 feet off the road. We had, you know, issues with some of the businesses on Okeechobee. Got it. Not a problem. But then we get to the parking section. And that's where you run into the problem. Because if these vehicles are stored overnight, they're stored. And I don't know that that's a proper use of a retail commercial certainly site not a plan. site planned parking area and it's not you know called out in the site plan as you would see in a lot of the other places that i've seen over the years site plan which have vehicular storage in the back because it is designated as such this is not so. uh, if one one thing more if i may say and this is just from the just a general application as a visa vr client and other tenants i understand that the, the the Dodo Donuts, you know, they have five food trucks in the back. That's a, possibly a different situation in your eyes. But as a, a, an attorney who represents a client that owns many shopping centers across the United States, we oftentimes have tenants. Uh, a florist is a good example, um, which may have a delivery truck, you know, maybe a van, a delivery van. And it's, I, in this center in particular, because this is a code specific to this village, I understand. I think it would be helpful to us to understand, um, is, is it like a bright line test that absolutely no uh, vehicles associated with any tenant business is allowed for, you know, excuse me, uh, for a specific period of time? I mean, Publix, for example, receives deliveries and those trucks may stay overnight. Is that then in violation of the code? Yes, Publix would not be allowed to have their vehicles stay there overnight. I've never seen a Publix truck stay overnight. And I drive Their drivers there drive there, they deliver, right. and then they leave. And I just, again, I just, Publix I just, you know, the normal operation of a business, live. it seems like it's, it's, it's natural yeah. to a certain degree to have vehicles that come and go, and they may be there for more than 60 minutes. So I just wanted to make that point, um, right, but well, I appreciate the, the, the consideration. The point has been made, but I think I'm sticking with the code. With we said, <laughs> Ms. Brown, you just look like you have to get one last word in. Or let yes. It go. Um, uh, again, uh, the, the fact is, is that these food trucks, they could come back at 2 o'clock in the morning. They could come back at 8 o'clock in the evening because they go in different points around not only Palm Beach County, but throughout South Florida. And there's no storage in those vehicles. They're, they're just refrigerated. The only reason that the cord was there is for the refrigerator. So they're not storing product. We're not talking about storing product. We're talking about storing vehicles. Okay. Well, they're not. If 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 they're, you they're saw me a, if you showed me a site plan that showed the back of that building designated for vehicle storage, I would say you are the man and you've got it right. But I don't think anyone ever did that, and maybe your client should have looked at that before he chose the location. I don't know. But a site plan is that for for vehicle parking and for a parking of a vehicle that's related to that business is it your opinion that if they, they couldn't they couldn't have any low. they couldn't have is it your position that they couldn't have that no business in the parking lot could have a business vehicle that comes and parks because there's a, there's several businesses there that do that and they've been doing it for years so I'm, I'm, I'm I, when you look at the code and and even the section that talks about uh, store and if you look at the, the the use of the parking areas required parking and loaded areas that <laughs> section subsection six 
And when you look at it, to store any goods, materials, or inventory used in conjunction with any business or use on or off the premises. My vehicles don't do that. I'm not looking at that section. I'm looking at A. I'm sorry? I was looking at Section A, I believe. Section A? I was looking at one of... B and D. B and D. There's one about you know, storing operable and inoperable vehicles. To store... Well... If we're reading from the same section, you mean 6B? Is that what you're referring to? Yes, sir, but your, your bigger problem, if I may, is that your business is not even licensed to be there, so those trucks shouldn't even be there, number one. Number two, they're in site plan parking, required parking spaces. I, I can address the issue of the license. But now, I can see that because they are under construction, and I just talked to my client. He believes that the building department will finally issue their permit on the CO this Friday. Is that correct? But Isn't the violation different? exists already. And even that still does not deal with my, it's storing vehicles over there. And it's not just a vehicle, it's multiple. Okay, so, so that it's clear, Mr. Magistrate, you're saying that by them parking their vehicles there uh, related to their business is the equivalent of storing a vehicle on the property? Correct. So how, how, what, what time period, what's the test for a time period that makes their vehicle storage as opposed to coming and going. What's the bright line test? I don't have a bright line test, but my my review or my uh, consideration of this is if they're left overnight and they're plugged in, they're stored. They're not being used. So is it the plug in? Just for clarification, is it the it's plug in? It's not the plugging in. The it's left there overnight. The plugging in is an additional problem. Leaving overnight is probably the biggest problem. If they're just coming back and forth, you're not storing them, you're using them. If you're leaving them overnight, you're storing them. I understand your interpretation. Thank you. All right, what do we want here? We are asking for compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Okay. Um, 227 that gives them pretty much a month yeah, and, and, and a and half to deal with all these issues that they can deal with I can, we'll, I can we can certainly that. work with opposing counsel because yeah. well, it's, so it's not even opposing counsel yet so it's just counsel yeah okay <laughs> I appreciate that 227 um, we, 311 yes that's or, the $25 dates, a or 25 dollars yeah. a day that gives you sufficient time to talk to people and see what types of interpretation they have if the building department has a different interpretation than me I will bow to their interpretation. And, and we would also like, if, if the issue is that we need to amend the site plan, since we do have surplus parking, to identify specific spaces for the overnight parking of these vehicles with the understanding that nothing else is happening, because that is what their lease provides, um, if they can get the necessary approvals. If you, get, if you can work out some deal with the village, I will rubber stamp it. I just am not going to let okay. it sit there. If, and just, just to clarify, if let's say we need to amend the site plan, that typically takes more than 30 days, would we be able to come back in and request more time at the February hearing? Or I don't know how the staff yeah. handles that. No, make it a status slash fine assessment. And if you're moving to amend the site plan, at least I know you're going forward that way. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've changed it to a status slash fine assessment hearing so we can see what's going on. Thank you all. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. That was a. More in-depth legal argument than I'm used to, and I'm sorry, Madam Court Reporter, for talking over them. Too many. Thank you. Okay. Now we are moving to page nine, nine. fine mitigation hearings, 16-1868-11963, Southern Boulevard, Crestwood Square, LTD. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Uh, Christmas 2016. It's probably a good year. Okay. Go back to you. Okay, so... Please identify yourself for the record. Uh, Jeffrey Saro, uh, representing Crestwood Square LTD. Can you spell your last name, sir? S-A-R-R-O-W. Okay. Um, 
Why should the fine be reduced? Let me give you the fine amount, sir. It's seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. I believe that the notice was issued sometime in uh, October of 2007, uh, 2016. Um, uh, Crestwood Square, of course, is a shopping center. Uh, this was a 10 violation immediately upon receiving uh, the notice from the city of the violation. Uh, we attempted to contact and did contact uh, the, uh, the tenant, which was uh, Philly Grill. Uh, we repeatedly tried to get Philly Grill to uh, uh, comply with the signage issue. Uh, ultimately, uh, we uh, retook possession of the uh, space in uh, June of uh, 2017, and immediately upon retaking possession, uh, we removed uh, all of the offending signage and came into compliance. I have photographs uh, that were taken in June of uh, 2017. Uh, I also have the property manager here, Mr. Fabian Rodriguez, who will testify as to the condition of the property at that time. Uh, we did everything. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, we were also in contact with Ms. Foley uh, during this uh, time. Um, the tenant apparently had advised Ms. Foley that all of the signage uh, was, uh, uh, had been taken down. Uh, that was uh, in violation of the code. Uh, that turned out to be incorrect. We found that out later. Uh, so uh, we believe that we uh, took all of the uh, efforts that, that are reasonable uh, to come into compliance. Uh, as I say, uh, we've been in compliance uh, since uh, June of 2017. Uh, I would request that the uh, fine be knocked down uh, and mitigated to uh, $350. Okay, you have proof? Uh, yes, I have uh, pictures um, which I can submit as to the condition of the property in uh, 2016, 2017 rather. Because if they don't call, they don't call. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go back and look through the case. I don't Show them to council first, and then I'll be happy to look at them. There's that, but this is more of a close-up. Uh, this is in June of 2017. You can see, you know, this is when we really took possession, and as you can see, it's pretty clean. Uh, there's a larger. And, uh, and your contention is, is that these are attached to invoices dated 2017 that the photographs are taken the same time frame? Uh, uh, the, pho the photographs were taken the same time frame. As a matter of fact, and Mr. Rodriguez can actually authenticate uh, by way of his examination that uh, those mm -hmm. photographs were taken uh, when we and took possession in uh, June 2017. Okay. And that was the condition of the property. Thank you, sir. I don't have any objection to those. Thank All right. You. So without objection, admitted. Okay. Give them to her. She's the record keeper here, too. Okay. So. Okay. All right, so we're talking basically December through June, then, right? If, um, if you're right. June. You, you need to go back to your microphone so we can keep you on the record. In October and September 2016. The issue, Special Magistrate, is that this, this was not complied out by the village until 10 23, 2018. Oh, I understand. I'm, yeah. you know, that's not a problem. I mean, you know, you complied it when you finally noticed it or someone brought it to your attention. And like I said in my opening remarks, you know, people want affidavits of compliance. They need to call to get them verified. But if we have proof, I can deal with that. So? Uh, I, I will say that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, this is a continuing problem uh, and uh, we'll try to be more diligent as far as calling for reinspections. Yeah, well, the only person you hurt yourself. You know, it would have been easier for the village to say, oh, here's, a, here's the affidavit and you're done. But I can still deal with this. Okay, so we're dealing with a December 19th order, correct? 
December 19, 2016 order. Through, uh, through June of 17, if they're correct. Correct. Okay. Which we would not object to. Reducing it to that, to that amount, amount for those days. Those days. Correct. And Pick me amount of days. So that'd be about 150 ish times whatever it is. It's not going to be 17. I believe the fines were what, $25 per day? Mm hmm. Well, they're just, they're. They, they like being precise. They're counting days. Okay. So, so whatever it is in June. What was, what was our order? So the mitigated fine would be. We're getting there. Hold we're, on. We're this getting there. It would mitigate half of 17 and all of 18 this and 19. Is, uh, so. Yes. Yes. I know it's the wrong year, but it, it just helps me. <laughs> and what was the date of those photographs, sir? Uh, June 11th. Okay. Of 17? Yes. We don't count the eleventh then. No. So reestablishing the compliance date based on the pictures he's provided of June 11, 2017 would be a fine of $4,775. That's a total of 178 plus 13 is 91, 91, 191 days. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Excuse me, well, when was the run date? De December 19th? It was December 19th, but has already had a $325 fine as of as probably of, the meeting date, not the, the signing date. So The fine started December 2nd of 2016. Right. The fine started oh, on the 2nd. Okay. Right. So, right. so we're, at, we're at approximately 100, what did you say, 191 days? 191, yes, sir. All right, $4,775. All right. And and now you want difficulty time for kicking out your tenant? What's the village's position with regard to that? We, we, without going through this exercise, we, we were not far from that number. So and that, that's pretty much the best we were going to recommend. What was your number going to be? 46.85.86. Well, I, I, you know, again, I would submit that uh, the fine ought to be mitigated down. And you wouldn't be the only one who asked, but it doesn't always happen. So excuse me. So you all, you, you would be one to ask, but I'm not reducing it to $350. Well, I'll <laughs> so. And we would ask that to be paid in 60 days, which would be by 3-8. Okay. Well, I, 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 can, we, can, can we mitigate that down to 50%? I think 46. We, we would not oppose that. I mean, we would oppose that. that, that this is already a significant reduction. It's a 17 or $17,000 fine for what still happened and what village residents still had to deal with. It was still out of compliance. I understand when he took possession or, or right. removed the tenant, he helped facilitate the compliance, but it doesn't change the fact that it was out of compliance for a long time. Well, the only other thing that I would add is, again, we're not the the active violator here. It doesn't matter. Well, I, you're no, I, you're I, in I control understand. of the active I, I, violator. I understand we're the property owner and you know we're responsible. Um, but for purposes of mitigation, uh, we're not the active violator. Uh, and we tried to uh, utilize whatever best efforts we could uh, to get this remediated and, and bring the property into compliance. All right, by 310? 3-8. 3-8. I'll reduce it down to $4,500 by 3-8. Okay. And that's what I was 
And I will sign that order. Granted. By March 8th? By March 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is 18 0736 100 Cape Ivy Point Nautical Lakes HOA Inc. <clears throat> oh, this is a small file. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay. It's wrong. Okay, that's fine. September 17th. Okay. All right. Thank you. Who are you? Michael McCarthy, property MC manager. M A C. M C C A R T H Y. Okay, and you are with? Hi, Angela Fitch, resident. All right, and the question of this section is, why should the fine be reduced? What is the amount of the fine? $9,325. Okay, why should the fine be reduced? Well, well, a few reasons. Um, when, when we first came in and the fine was, was um, um, put on us, um, we, we had already been into litigation, I mean, bidding for contractors and that, and it was just taking a long time. We, we also had to hire uh, landscape architects we went through your village to have that all taken care of, and there was, you know, a lot of back and forth, uh, not being able to get the, the permits and all that kind of done. Then we had to bid the job out, so it's taken a long time. Um, we, we are in compliance, and we, we've always tried to be in compliance since that time. Um, and we did everything possible that we could do and to do so. And just to share a little bit, the. Um the original code enforcement violation didn't occur because the village happened by our neighborhood and saw the landscaping issue or saw the um, the repairs that needed to be done um, on the playground. It was a former disgruntled board member who we found out later was selling her home and contacted code enforcement, even though she knew that we were already had plans in place prior to that. To you know, we're a moderate neighborhood, 200 homes about. Uh, to little by little fix the, the things that needed, you know, hurricanes knocked down trees, things needed to be repaired, but she wanted it done faster. So we have had a long journey in our community of learning <laughs> about all of these things. And the $140,000 was the, was the total of the job as well. Yes. And one of the issues that delayed us greatly was that um, when we realized we needed to hire a landscape architect, we were able to hire the original landscape architect for the community when it was built. And we discovered that the village's landscaping plans were not the most updated plans. So there was a huge contrast into what our architect was seeing and what the plans were that the village had. So we had to go through, I don't know, we met with the village maybe six, seven times, different departments to try to make sure we were doing everything we needed to. Um, and finally, we were able to get them to approve the correct set of plans. And then we could move on from there. Okay, what was really missing, what was not. Um, so that was part that was part of the issue <laughs> of the delay and how long it took to get all of that fixed, squared away, straightened up. We'll let them finish whispering. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, and I, I recall these folks from the planning and zoning process, as she said, and just so that the record is clear, it wasn't difficulty getting permits, it was just the time lapse to go through the process and as you said there was issues with the plans that were on file and also learning okay well we have this but now we need a permit okay we gotta wait okay now we can go <laughs> correct correct so you nice. did you did bump your way through the process um and as i recall we're diligent about that and i think i even um we we at some point had told you that we would support reduction at the point yes. you got through yes, um, the process so uh holding true to that the village is amenable to reducing this to fifteen hundred dollars sold thank you and we'll do the same 60 days 60 by 3-8. Yeah. Yeah. 1,500 by 3-8? Yes, Is that sir. doable? March 8th, correct? Correct. Okay. See? They kept their word. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Run away. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for your support, by the way. <laughs> Next is 19-0789-129 Finch Court, Deborah M. Owens. 
I'd like to enter, <coughs> pardon me, I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, fine mitigation request. Exhibit two, order assessing fine. Exhibit three, verification ownership. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Okay. You never have copies of those things. I always have to guess truck or car. <laughs> okay. You Hello. are? Deborah Owens. And with you is? Timothy Owens, my son. Okay. It's special magistrate, the fine amount is $525. Okay. So they, they must have jumped in and done it quickly. Otherwise, it wouldn't have stopped. So that's what, eight days past the 325. Right. All right. Why should the fine be reduced? Um, I wasn't home at the time. I was up in Michigan all summer. Um, with my, my dad coded and my um, father-in-law died of cancer. So I wasn't even here. And my son was there um, when we were sighted. And uh, I talked to him on the phone and I told him what to do. And he get, got everything done in compliance, but he didn't call her in time. So we got fined $25 a day until I got home and realized they didn't call for the reinspection. And the village's position is? This is a, always, a, these are tricky ones for us because they're, although the fine amount is small, our costs exceed that and there's still always. additional costs. So I would just ask, well, I'll leave, we'll leave this to your discretion, but I would ask that you recall that there's still a release fee, which is typically $250 by the time it's drafted, recorded, and done. Okay. I'll reduce it to the release fee amount, 250 bucks. By 3.8. Thank you. 250 by 3.8. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Because there's got to be more. We've got people still sitting here. Page 10, we're on 11 1342 11599 Okeechobee Boulevard, Ramco Crossroads at Royal Palm. Okay, mm -hmm. mm. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, the fine mitigation request. Exhibit two, order assessing fine. Exhibit three, verification of ownership. And exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Good to see my signatures pretty much stayed the same from 2011. All right. Here we go. All right, please state your name for the record. It's Deidre, D-E-D-R-A, Middleton, M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N. And I am the property manager, so I am the owner's agent. Okay. All right. Sir, the fine is amount is 14400 that's all. It was 2011. <laughs> I was expecting a hundred grand or something. Nineteen hundred dollars. What case number was it? Eleven dash thirteen forty two. Yeah, that's not like looking at a 2011 case. Normally at twenty five bucks a day, that adds up to billions. Maybe I have it wrong. No, I think because you're looking at the order, so it was nineteen hundred, and then to continue to comply. When was it in compliance? Um, or I'm sorry, or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. The affidavit of compliance was dated February 22nd, 2012. Okay, so they did stop it. That's why it's not a billion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you did some work and you stopped it. <laughs> Whose signs were these? Do we know, even know? Just I think it was, mat I think it was mattress one or something. It was mattress comfort. Yeah. Oh, we ended up filing that. for bankruptcy, so we had to go through the whole bankruptcy thing. Right, to get possession of it. And we notified them. I mean, and they didn't care because they were in bankruptcy, so. Exactly. Screw everybody. Okay, so you had difficulties getting the compliance because of the proceedings. And that's Correct. your argument. I mean, what do you think it should be reduced to? A lot less, huh? <laughs> I have to $250. ask. Two hundred and fifty dollars. You you outbid the other guy by a hundred. 
You should go to law school. All right, what's the village's position with regards to this? The village would be amenable to reducing it to $3,600, payable by 3-8. We can't reduce that. I mean, our hands are tied when it comes to these tenants, and we are getting, you know, I've taken over this portfolio two years ago, and just in the last 30 to 60 days, I've been hit so hard with so many fines from from tenants not being in compliance. I know, that's a horrible thing, but unfortunately your job is leasing property to tenants, and you know, it's almost like you know, there needs to be some more powers in your leases to go in there and correct, but it isn't, and unfortunately that's all, oh, we could have had a nice bag. Um, and you know, it's I mean, there's not a really the village's fault that your tenants aren't listening to you is, is probably the bottom line of this. But you have to go in through litigation. I mean, we have to give them an opportunity to cure and... I, I love lawyers' <laughs> fees. They make my world go around. But unfortunately, I'm just the code enforcement guy right here. And, you know, 14.4 down to 3,600, I would still consider that a win in my book. Can you bring it 25? <laughs> 32? Here you go. This is your one bargaining thing here. Uh, I, I knocked it off another $400. 32? Mm hmm And I need... for asking? And you need more time? Yeah. Four, I mean, eight? I need at least 60 days because I still... Well, we're giving you... Today is the 8th. That would be 3-8 with 60 days. days. I'll make it 4-8 just so you have some cushion. Because what happens is when you mail the paperwork for me to cut a check, it goes to our P.O. box, and I'm still waiting for the stuff from last time because I can't process. You need to get her number and yeah. just... I didn't email it to you? Oh, Deidre. Oh, shoot. So, and I know that that's... Too. Those are no, no, due. That, you just need to call, call them, did. and they will I... happily do it. Sometimes they forget. I know. <laughs> I, have it, I thought I did it as well. That's all right. They're getting an extra month, and they got an extra no, 400 is, bucks off. So No, but she has some from last month that, right, she's that she needs. Close That's on fine. Them. You'll, so just, you'll you get it to tomorrow. 3,200 by 4.8? 32 by 4.8. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, what are you here for? She's on page two at the bottom. Oh, good. She needs to be sworn in. Yeah, she needs to be sworn in. Yeah, we'll get her there. <clears throat> and this is a fine assessment hearing. Yep. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. My Your name, ma'am? Oh. Grace. Hold on, let me get the just, case number in. Okay. Wait just one second. Case number 19-1307, 600 Business Parkway, AP 2012, Royal Manor, LLC. Okay. I'd like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, AS400, permit information. And an email ver uh, from engineering. Do not click on any links in this email. <laughs> you have a signed green card, you have service. Can you say the record, ma'am? First name, Grace. Last name. Grace, first name, last name, Achille. Spell your last name, please. Spell your last name. A-C-H-I-L-L-E. Thank you, ma'am. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the previous order finding violation with the signed green card. Exhibit two is verification of ownership. Exhibit three is photographs of the violation. And exhibit four is documentation regarding the engineering permits. Do you have any objection to these documents? No, I don't. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Building and disrepair. Let me see that again. Stripies. Fortunately, for some reason, I drive all over this place. I've actually been back there in Business Parkway. I oh, yeah? forgot what I was looking for, but I was there. I'm like, oh, this is back here. How interesting. It's like right at the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. 
All right, so you're looking at uh, faded stripes in the parking lot and part of the, what do you call that, the driveway cover? That, that overhang, yeah. Overhang is, somebody hit it is, and is damaged. Is in, in repair state or being needs to be repaired? Needs to be. Okay. All right, let me flip this over to the right side. So you have service and she hasn't objected to your documents, no? You haven't shown them? No All right, so admitted without objection. All right, they're going to want me to fine you because you were supposed to have done this by earlier. One three, correct. It's been out of compliance for five days, so we're asking for a fine of $125 a day and continuing. Can, can I tell you that the opportunity to explain to you what happened? Of I course. did call Margaret to leave a message at our visionary creation to take care of the overpass. I pay, my company had paid 50% of the required fee. That was for them to apply for permit since October and to start the project. And at the completion of the project, we were supposed to pay the remaining balance. They had told us this is a project that will take them three to four days to complete. As I was approaching November, I realized that I haven't heard from them. I called them. They told me they were not in Florida. They were working in some other project. Knowing that I had until January 3rd to complete, I keep on calling with no reply. I keep on sending email with no reply. So I asked my maintenance department to go to the address that was supposed to be business address. There is a for sale sign. At that time when there is a for sale sign, I call headquarters to ask for a legal department, for an attorney to send a letter. I called Better Business Bureau to file a complaint. And I, uh, I, uh, I keep on, I, I call the village to leave a message to say that I cannot reach the company, they have the money, and I bring proof of where we have paid the void check, copy of my communication with Better Business Bureau, and copy of my communication with my legal department, who send them a letter to say that they have until January 5th, January 15, to send a response, and if they don't, they're going to sue them, and in the meantime, because of the holiday season, I, it was very difficult to find somebody else to come and give another quote to work on the overpass. I have a company that is coming next week to give me another quote, and that's what I was so nervous. I was very nervous about it. I call, I left message from Margaret. I say I need some help because. I'm not getting in touch with them. They have the money. Please, please, please help me. Give me another extension. And my corporate department, I have a copy of the check that they have cash. I have a copy of my communication with Better Business Bureau. I have a copy of the letter that my legal department sent to them. So, um... Okay, how much was the check? The check was for... Deposit, 4,512, I have a copy of it here. And That's I, I did speak with Grace um, right before Christmas, and she told me about it. Mm -hmm. um, but they, um, they, it was actually, the violation was October. No, she said she contracted Nothing's in October. Really and yes, done. I just heard it was but I've never heard it. It's gone. Right, and they never did the engineering well, stuff for the parking lot. Sounds like either. it was a failing or scammy company, either or. Um, the problem is, it's not the village's fault that the company went under, went under or out of business. Um, but I am sympathetic to your plight. 
You, have you hired someone else to do this? Somebody is coming. The only decision, everybody, since they had told me it was going to take them three to four days to complete it. And no, no, they I'm, know, not, I'm not concerned about the old people. I'm not concerned about Somebody the else is coming next week to give me a, a co another quote. Okay. I'm going to bump this as a status fine assessment for next month to see if they've gotten their quote and they've signed a contract. Okay. And if you have, we'll talk about it then. And if you haven't, okay. you'll just be we in violation. We would ask that the fine start. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to leave it back it at the regular date it's supposed to be. Correct. But I'm going to give them till next month to see because of their circumstances whether they've hired someone else. Can we get 60 days, no, please? No. Because how many weeks it takes to get the contract? Because in October. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do as much as I can for you, but truly I could find you right now and just let you go on with your lives and just rack up fines. So I'm stopping the process a bit for you, but you know, I want to hear by the next meeting that you've signed a contract and these people are going to do the work. Otherwise, it's been since October, nothing's been done, and the village should get fines. Okay. Thank you so, for your consideration. Okay. So and what are the dates one here? Is for the visionary recreation. I don't, don't. It's enough. Okay. What are the dates in for next month? The hmm. hearing date is two twelve. Two twelve. So let's just back it off to the what's the Friday before then? Seven two seven. Two seven. Need to talk to Margaret and see what's going on there, and come back to see me on the twelfth. So I can know what's going on. Otherwise, I'm just going to put the fine back to when it was supposed to be done in probably late October, early November, whenever the date was. It was 1 3. So you, you want the order to reflect that if they don't comply by 2 7, that the fine will start at 1 4. Exactly. Move forward as if it were, they were fine today. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you. For the restriping of the parking lot, I find a company that is going to take care of it. Well, they are they're supposed to come tomorrow. They have requested that I give the survey, I give uh, uh, the name of the corporate owner, and I give 50% for the restriping. They come in to collect everything from me tomorrow. Good. Well, they need hopefully. a permit. Yeah, they come in. They, uh, they already co come in to do the, uh, the Trinity, uh, Trinity as fat. That they are coming to get the permit. Right. Okay, well, hopefully, you got a company that's bonded and insured this time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. 212. Thank we'll you, see you again. We're going back to page one of the agenda fine assessment hearings. Case 19 1144 is being pulled. Oh, back to one. Yes, sir, back to one. 19 1144 is being pulled. Pulled, good, okay. 19 1263 122 Gibraltar Street, Susan Freeman and Ronald Gindolf. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, the previous order, finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. I keep wanting to add an R to his name just to make it a grind off. I don't know why. Okay, you have <clears throat> affidavit of service. You have service. What's the problem with this one? Driveway stain. Okay, better shot here. Is that clean already or no? Is it still dirty? No. Okay. It's right around the corner from my house. Okay. What do you want? This has been out of compliance for 13 days. Excuse me, so 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Next is 19-1286, 133 Galliano Street, Therapist to You, Inc. Back to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, the previous order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. Okay. <clears throat> we're missing the Lou. Now we're not. No, we're not. All good. right, sign green card good. equals service. <coughs> Driveway. Well, they just don't like that swale, huh? Um, 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 um. Driveway and sidewalk, garbage can not screen, what's out of the street. All right. All right, sign green card equal service. What would you like? Again, 13 days, a fine of 325 and continuing. Granted. 19 1573 is being pulled. 19 1606, 119 Belmont Drive, Deutsche Bank, National Trust, Company Trust. Mike Tanner into evidence, Exhibit 1, the previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, picture. 
and exhibit four affidavit of compliance. Sign green card equals service. Is this a finding of fact? No. No, no it's a fine. Okay, how much? This was out of compliance for 12 days, so we'd be asking for 300. a fine of 300 and not continuing. No continuing. Granted. 19-1380-749 Orchid Drive, Julio and Alexandra Balmaceda. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Um, sorry. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Okay, you have a signed green card. Is this, what's the matter for the fine on this one? There's a fine. No fine? No, there is a fine. I, okay, uh, what is the amount? It was out of compliance for 11 days, so $275, not continuing. 275 no continuing is granted. 19-1448 is being called. 19-1438-10274 Okeechobee Boulevard, Boulder Venture Employees 1. I know this name. Don't remember the property, but I do remember the name. The same someone? Different one. School. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Different one. Because there's an Okeechobee 7 Eleven, too. This one. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. The following documents and evidence Exhibit 1, previous order, find a violation, USPS tracking. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, picture. Ah, oh, the rare tracking confirmed. She usually gets signed green cards. <laughs> oh my God, cigarettes are six fifty one a pack. I quit smoking twenty. Well, my my daughter just turned twenty, so nineteen years ago. Six bucks. I remember it was a dollar for a pack of smokes. I mean, for real cents. cigarettes, not these generic crappy things, too. 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, you're old. All right, how much? <clears throat> 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. You have service by a Thank tracking you. confirm. 19-1526-10707, Summertime Lane, HPA Borrower 2016-1 LLC. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation, USPS tracking. <coughs> Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Right. Another tracking confirmed. They just aren't signing them, but they're delivering them. Yep. All right, let's see. Oh, my moldy. <laughs> wow. It's not getting out. That anything. takes a while. Is that the north side of the house? <laughs> That's where the no, mold grows on east, trees. It's the east side. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, yes, definitely. Stained, molded, nasty. What do you want? 325 for 13 days, so 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. 19 1324 131 Swan Parkway West, Gary M. and Susan J. Chirillo. Then are the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, find a violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. This has those nasty initials on the property owner's thing. It's called WFS, Wood Frame Structure. You do not want a WFS in South Florida. Oh. All right, it's obviously, well, you have service via posting. It's obviously rotting and cracking at the base. Yes, and what would you like Again, 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 19-1400-115 J Court, Kesner and Paula Chrysostome. Like Sounds like it should be a science documents project. And evidence. Exhibit one, previous order, find a violation. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit compliance. Oh, well, it's more of Margaret's normal signed green cards. Is this a fine or is this a It is a fine. It was out for 12 days. It's 300 and not continuing. 300 no continuing is granted. Thank you. Status slash fine hearings, 19-0539 is being pulled. Back to repeat violations, 19-1613, 246 Sandpaper Avenue, Audrey James. Like ten are the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, previous order finding repeat violation and assessing fine. Exhibit three, verification ownership. Exhibit four, pictures. 
Ooh. She needs to borrow my riding mower. She used to come here, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know. What would you like on this? This has one? been out of compliance for 63 days, so we're asking for a fine of $3,150 and continuing. Granted. Thank you. 19 1702 159 Sunflower Circle, Jean F. Duderval. <clears throat> I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Previous Order Finding, Repeat Violation and Assessing Fine. Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership. Exhibit 4, Pictures. Exhibit 5, Affidavit of Compliance. They grow the greenest weeds. <laughs> they do. All right, so what is the amount on this This was one? out of compliance for 21 days at $50 a day, so a fine of $1,050. 1050, oh, no continuing is granted. Thank you. Next, top of page four, violation hearings, 19-1566-100 Meadowlands Drive, Pamela K. Dunstan and Jacqueline Sawicki. The code section is 15141. Uh, description is dead pine trees. I observed this violation on 11119. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and I have actual service on it. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three, picture, and exhibit four affidavit of compliance. Okay, so it's, is this, a, this is just <coughs> finding, a a fact. finding a fact. Three dead ones. Must be something bad going on back there. FOF is granted. 19 1568 361 La Mancha Avenue, Michael Sheets, and Francis Everhard. Code section is 6190H and 2316. Shutters are closed and parking on the swale without moving every 24 hours. I observed this violation on 11119, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. I own that step side truck at one time. It went boom. All right, sign green card equals service. What would you like? Compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted, 227, 31125. 19-1582-2235, Artera Court, IH3 property, Florida LP. Code section is 6190H. Uh, description is shutters are closed. I observed this violation on 11519. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed on 1120. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one. Notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three, pictures, and exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Finding effect is granted. Thank you. 19 1659 108 Royal Pine Circle North, Carlos V. Diaz. Code section is 6190H. The shutters are closed. I observed this violation on 111519. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed on 1120. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 3, Picture. Second story. Ooh, they don't have a big ladder, I guess. All right, you have a signed green card, you have service. What would you like? Compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 19-1721, 265 Las Palmas Street, Progress Residential Borrower 7, LLC. Code sections are 2318B3 and 6190A, parking on the lawn and the drive-in sidewalk are stained. I observed this violation on 12-219, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed on 12-5. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. Uh, big Ford truck. All right, this one is 227? No, this one's comply by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $50 per day fine. 130, 212, 50. Correct. Big truck. 19-1375, 867, Azalea Drive, Dolores O. Robinson. Code section 94, fence and disrepair. I observed this on 91719. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out on 917 and were posted. I would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. All right, it's so uh, affidavit of service equals service. Tricolored fence. Oh, actually that's shadows then probably because it looks like brown, white, and black. No, it's this one. Shadows, so you got a white section of the fence. It's not cool. 
All right. Asking for compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 19 1536 107 Knights Court, Bradford Richardson, Bradford Richardson Trust, Bradford Richardson Trust title holder. Code section 2657, shed installed without a permit. I observed this on 10 24 19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 10 25 19 and were signed for on 10 31 19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Signed, green card equals service. Okay, and this is shed. Oh, there's a shed, okay. Again, 227, 311, 25, granted. 19 1587, 1028, Grandview Circle, Christopher Berry. Should be. Barry Christopher? Or Christopher Berry. Ah, okay. Code sections 06, 190A, 1, 3, and 5, driveway and sidewalk are stained. I observed this on 11 6 19, the notice of violation, notice of hearing, were mailed out 11 6 19, and were signed for on 11 14 19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Okay, finding fact. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Granted, you have service via posting. Thank you. 19 1607 1518, Running Oak Lane, James and James Jr. and Hillary B. Owens. Code section 12.4, print C um, and 12.5, garbage can in public view and put out on the wrong day. I observed this on 11.7.19, the notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 11.7.19 and were signed for on 11.22.19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership and exhibit three pictures. All right, your signed green card equals service. That's a good printer. That's so blue. <laughs> See? I figured out. Okay. Three two twenty seven or is yes, early? compliance by two twenty seven or three eleven fine hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. Granted. Thank oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, was that one thirty? I was one down. One thirty or two twelve or twenty five a day. Now I've gotten all kinds of scratches through here. <coughs> one thirty, two twelve. Twenty five. Twenty five. Well, first I put the finding of fact in the wrong place. I'd scratch you that. Then I put the 320, 227. Scratch you that. All right, 130. 19, thank you. 19 1619 605 Garden Crest Trail, 2018 3 IH Borrower LP. Code section is 06190, Prince A, Prince 1, Prince 5, and Prince H, 6191. Um, the sidewalk is stained, stained and storm shutters are up. I observed this on 11 9 19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 11 15 19 and were signed for on 11 26 19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. <clears throat> Second story. I need to borrow my big ladder. All right, green, green card signed. 6191, which is a storm shutters, is a finding of fact. Oh, well, at least it is something. And for the other section, we'd be asking for compliance by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank 19 you. 19 1649 1176 Corusway, Edward C. and Sharon A. Durant. Code section 06190, Prince A, Prince 1, structure in disrepair and stained. I observed this on 11-15-19, the notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 11-15-19 and were signed for on 11-22-19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership and exhibit 3, pictures. Signed, green card equals service. Wow, it's got cracked stucco to just... She's trying to find someone to do it. To set off the dirty walls. Gotcha. We're asking for compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19-165... Oh, wait, we had... Um, oh, no. I'm sorry. 19-1653-10090, Patience Lane, Francisco Rodriguez, Jr. Code section 6191, 15 and, excuse me, 15143, broken window and bare spots in the swell. I observed this on 11 14 19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 11 15 19 and were signed for on 11 22 19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. Signed, green card equals service. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not even a good repair. All right. <laughs> 
6191, which is a broken window, is a finding of fact. Oh, you fixed it better. In the remaining code section, we're asking for compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 19-1680-106, Knights Court, the Florida LP. Code section is 06190, prints 8, prints 1, prints 3, and prints 5, driveway and sidewalk <coughs> state. I observed this on 11-19-19, the notice violation, notice of hearing, were mailed out 11-19-19, sorry, and were signed for on 11-26-19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. You know, over these last, well, this page and the next two, there's one person who showed up. It's like, really? <clears throat> I would be proud of this dirt. That took a while. All right, but they fixed it? Finding Finding fact is granted. Well, they didn't have to show up. 19-1684, 144 Queens Lane, and R. Pierre. <clears throat> Code section is 06190H. Boards, are, excuse me, boards are covering the windows. I observed this 11-19-19. The notice violation, notice of hearing, were mailed out 11-19-19, and were signed for on 11-26-19. Like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one notice of violation notice of hearing exhibit two verification of ownership and exhibit three pictures sign green card equal service We're looking for boards over windows tell me they're boards over windows because this is just a blurry it's, shot yeah it's over if by the it's right here see it over by the fancy yeah the fence that's on what that wall. kind of right above the dark board on the fence <clears throat> okay it just it needed some testimony to back it up. All right, what would you like with these? 320 Clients or 130? Clients by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Yeah, it is like January. These people should have the shutters down. 19-1689, 233 Cypress Trace, Anthony D. Chin. Um, code section 98, hedges are over four feet. I observed this on 1119. 19, the notice violation and notice of hearing were mailed out 11 19, 19 and were signed for on 11 22, 19. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three, pictures. Sign green card equals service. We have here. So he's got them trimmed up really nice. They're just a little too tall, huh? Yeah, they're still too tall. All right, sign green card equals service. What would you like? Compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19-1782 is being pulled. 19-1519, 125 Eider Court, Mona Talent, and that should be T-A-L-L-E-N-T, -E and Stevenson G. Situte. Okay. Perfect. Pots of weeds. I like the description. Codes 15, 141, 15, 132, and 1571, dead hedges and pots of weed. I observed this violation on 10, 22, 19, and now notice the violation, notice of hearing on 10, 23, and received it on 10, 30, um, 19. Like the following documents and evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification ownership, exhibit three, pictures. They're just growth challenged. They're not dead. Okay, so they don't look good, and, and I'm waiting for the compliance. pots of plants. I thought it was going to be lots of weeds or something. Yeah. Finding a fact? Yes. Granted. Yeah, pots of weeds, lots of weeds, whatever. Got it. 19-1572, 123 South State Road 7, number 203, Real Sub LLC. Code section 2041, prohibited sign. I observe this violation on 11-2. 19, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11 4 19. They signed for it on 11 8 19. I'd like to handle the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. So they're putting signs up at the back? Well, they moved it from the front and now it's in the back. They really didn't want to get rid of the sign. Yep. Sign green card equals service. What would you like? Compliance by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19 1593 102 Moorgate Circle, Raymond J. Wordsman. Code section 06190H, 95, 15, 132, and 942. Shutters on home, hedges exceed allowable height, dead palm from fence and disrepair. I observed this violation on 11619. 
So now notice the violation, notice of hearing on 11-6-19, he signed for it on 11-8-19. Like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. I had to look through all those pictures for that. Finding a fact is granted. Thank God he did it. 19-1601-129 Swan Parkway West. Try to talk faster. H and Marie Car. C. Thibault. Code section 14-4 and 0690-A1. Disabled vehicle driveway is stained. I observe this violation on 11-619. Send out notice of violation notice of hearing on 11-619. And received it on 11-15-19. Signed. I'd like to enter the following documents and evidence. <coughs> Exhibit 1. Notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification ownership, Exhibit 3, pictures, Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. That car is the reason why I drive a truck. I got wiped out by an SUV and I said the next person that hits me is going to hit something taller. All right, finding a fact is granted. Fact. You Thank have a signed you. green card. Thank you. 19 1617 Summertime Lane, Michael B. Bonham, Jr. Did not have to go with truck because I'm going Section 14 4 and 0 a disabled and unused vehicles, driveway is stained. I observed this violation on 11 8 19. Sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11 8 19. They signed for it on 11 13 19. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. All right, was it the truck? It was all. The truck, the two white trucks, and the Volkswagen. Wow. Okay, I'm right on both. They got a tag for the Volkswagen, then they removed the tr trucks. All right. So finding, finding a fact. fact is granted. Nineteen dash one six two four one ninety six Sparrow Drive A. <coughs> J R Santa. It should be Santa Maria LLC. One quick typo, just small typo. Code section twenty six fifty seven canopies without a permit. I observed this violation on eleven twelve nineteen. Sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-12-19. Received it on 11-18-19. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Finding a fact is granted. I just read that as Santa Maria. I didn't see the mistake. It just went bloop, past. <laughs> Maybe it's because I know he founded the village almost. Oh, I know. All right, 19-1626, 159 Sunflower Circle, Jean F. Duderval. Code section 2318B and 740, parking on the back lawn, not maintaining to water's edge. Observe the violation on 11-12-19, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-12-19, and posted it to the property. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Now, the red car jumped out at me, but there's another car right behind the back house? Yeah, pick that out. Okay. And code section 7-40, which is the not maintaining to the water's edge, is a finding of fact. Okay, and the, the other, other cars? the other section comply by 227 or the 311 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19-1637-137 Meadow Lark Drive, Everardo and Sonia Rodriguez. Code section 2318B, parking on the back lawn. I observe this violation on 11-14-19. Sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-14-19 and received it on 12-2. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Uh, two trailers? Two trailers. See, good counting here, Doug. Right. Right. For compliance by 227 or the 311 fine hearing a $25 a day fine. Granted. 19 1642 10651 <clears throat> Misty Lane, Patrick J. and Robin L. Casto III. Code section 0619A135 and 942. Sidewalk and driveway are stained, fence and disrepair. I observed the violation on 111419. So now knows the violation, knows the hearing on 111519. They signed for it on 112119. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Finding Exhibit a fact is granted with the signed green card being service. Thank you. Thank you. 19-1676 is being pulled. 19-1677 is being pulled. 19-1700-10638, Misty Lane, Angeli A. Frazier. Car. Section. I have to guess car or truck for these. <laughs> Which one? Car. Code section 14 4 23 18 
06190H, disabled vehicle parking on front lawn shutter. I observed this violation on 11 2019, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11 2119. They signed for it on 11 2319. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. That's a nice car. It's an Acura. It's a fancy <laughs> Honda. All right. What do you like with them? That's Compliance by 227 or the 311 <coughs> fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19-1708-1049 Concert Way, IH6 Property, Florida, LP. Code section 2318B-06190-A135. Parking on the back lawn, sidewalk, and driveway are stained. I observed this violation on 11-2119. Sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-2219. And I received it on 12-219. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, verification ownership. Exhibit three pictures. Here's the really important question. Is it a car or a truck? Car. Yay. All right. I see it there. We're Granted. For compliance by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. 130, 212, 25 granted. Thank you. 19-1732, 11001 Southern Boulevard, IVT Southern Royal Palm Beach, 1031 LLC. Where are we now? Two below that one. Page eight. Page eight? Down. Okay. The code sections 2661G1 and 6190A5. The description is clothing drop boxes um, are on the property and perimeter sidewalks are stained. This violation was mailed out certified mail on 12-4-2019 and signed for on 2-9-2019. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. It's very bucolic. It's a very relaxing, shady kind of lake view. I kind of like that. Oh, and the fences are nice, too. All right, you have a signed green card. What would you like? Compliance by 130 or the 212 fine hearing or $75 a day fine. 130, 212, 75. <clears throat> Go to page top of 10, 19-1195. 226 Sandpiper Avenue, Richard and Joanne Dancero. All right, what, what, what page? Top 10. Top 10. I can add the following back into <clears throat> evidence. Exhibit one, fine medication request. Exhibit two, order assessing fine. Exhibit three, verification ownership. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Papers, in this case? Yeah. Finding fact is granted. No, this is a fine uh, mitigation. Fine mitigation. <laughs> yeah, if we could get him sworn in and his name for the record. Okay. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. He swears. And your name, sir? Richard Denzero. Thank you. The village it will reduce this to zero. Reduced to zero is granted. Thank you. Thank you. It's reduced to zero. It's reduced to zero. No fine. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Happy New Year. All right, we have a couple left on the yes. agenda. We have on the addendum, violation hearing 19-1730-155 South State Road 7309-315-11th Street, LLC. <coughs> what a weird name for that property. Okay, Probably so the office of the people. <coughs> Go ahead. The code section 2349 is not on there. It's 15141. Vegetation and landscape not maintained. Hedges are overgrown. Weeds in the perimeter berm and landscape is missing. This violation was mailed out. Certified mail return receipt requested on 12-3-2019 and signed for on 12-6-2019. I would like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. You okay, Lou? Other than she can't talk and she's choking to death. And Do you need water? Oh, she needs her voice back. <clears throat> Sign green card equals service. I hate asking you, but it's fine. We're asking for compliance by 130 or the 212 fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. 
When 32, 12, 25 is granted. Thank you. Now the health safety one time abatement hearing 19-1816 106 Hemingway Court McCormick Residential Trust and Benoit Malou Trust. Trustee. Trust. Trustee. 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 Code section 1557 grass and weeds exceeds height allowed. I observed this on 123019. The notice violation notice of hearing were mailed out 123119 and were posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. You have service by posting. Do you have an order prepared? Yes, sir, the order is for one-time abatement. Uh, we will be asking for recovery of our costs in the amount of 286. That's $80 for the mowing, $206 for administrative costs, and appearance at the 212-20 fine assessment hearing. Granted and signed. The village should know its way. Thank you. Is there anything further to be brought before the magistrate? No, sir. Please let the record reflect that I did sign the minutes of the December 11th hearing. And with nothing further, we are adjourned. <laughs>